Hey guys, this is Sal Mandaranagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm going to do another tutorial on wavetables in Reactor. And this is part two of a series, but it's pretty much a standalone tutorial and I'll link to part one in the video description in case you want to check it out. So after the first tutorial, I had some requests to modify the ensemble so that you could use the audio table as the sa sample playback engine instead of loading the samples into one of the sampler modules. So that's what we're going to focus on in this tutorial, and I'll show how we can morph between two waveforms as well. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with a new reactor video every week. All right, so let's get started. So I've loaded up my audio table, and we're going to make a lot of changes to it. I'm going to start by changing the table size. It starts empty, so I'm just going to give it uh, 2,048 elements along the x-axis. I'm going to change the minimum value to negative 1. I'm going to set the wrap or clip option to clip. I'm going to set the interpolation to affect both the x and the y axis. Uh, I'm going to turn off the scroll bars. I'm going to change the size. And I'm going to turn off the label and the value markers in the visible menu of the view tab of properties. All right, so the one thing that we've done this time that we didn't do in the previous video is turning on interpolation in the audio table. And what that's going to do is two things. It's going to allow us to morph between waveforms, and it's also going to stop our waveform from aliasing as badly as it normally would. And the reason for that is, is that interpolation is basically there to smooth out the positions in between the values that we're drawing in. So for example, we're drawing in this array that has 200 or 2048 values. So let's say we're running through that with an oscillator and we need to know the position of the waveform uh, between elements 5 and element 6. Well, when we have interpolation off, then it's simply going to look where we're so far we're trying to read element 5.4 and we have interpolation off it's just going to give us the output for uh, the element at uh, index number five but if we have interpolation on then it's going to read the element at number five and the element at index number six and it's going to kind of morph between them for us and just give us a smoother waveform and it's going to cut down on aliasing Okay, so just like last time, uh, we're using table draw mode to draw our values into the audio table. So now what we want to do is read through our audio table at a frequency that is going to be determined by incoming MIDI data. And so I'm going to use a ramp oscillator for that. So since we have uh, 2048 elements in our array, we're going to want our oscillator to read out indexes 0 through 2047 from the audio table. So I'm going to take the dx value out of the audio table, subtract 1 from it, and use it as the amplitude for the ramp oscillator. So the ramp oscillator is now going to have a range from 0 to 2047. And I'm going to take incoming MIDI data and translate the pitch to a frequency and use the frequency to control our ramp oscillator. So now this oscillator is going to go um, between 0 and 2047 at a frequency determined by incoming MIDI pitch. So I'm going to sync it to the new incoming MIDI gates and use it to read out our RX value from the audio table. So now let's make a quick envelope. I'm just going to make a really simple AR envelope and we'll just use it to turn the oscillator off whenever there's not a note being pressed. So we can just multiply that by the output of the audio table. And then we can connect that directly to the outputs of our ensemble and we can go for a test drive.
All right, so as you can hear there, whenever you have more discontinuities in the waveform, you get kind of more harmonics the same way that you get with a sawtooth or a square wave. And whenever you have a smoother waveform, then you get more of a triangle or sine wave type of a sound. All right, so let's modify this so we can store multiple wave tables at once. All you need to do is increase the Y element in the table size. So I'm just going to make it so we can store 128 wave tables at once. And in order to be able to view all of that, I'm going to turn off the Y auto fit function, change the alignment all the way to the left, and use the Y origin and Y range inputs to give us the current wave table that we're writing to and reading from. And I'm going to connect it to the read Y input as well. So how that's going to work is whenever we change our Y origin, it's going to change what our audio table is displaying and then once it's displaying what we want, we can use the table draw mode to simply draw in a wave table at that spot. And by using the same knob to control the read Y input, we're basically ensuring whenever we read the waveform, we're going to read the one that we're currently drawing to. All right, so now let's talk about how we can morph between two wavetables at once. And I'm just going to make a very simple setup here. I'm not going to do anything too complicated. So I'm going to disconnect um, the RY input that we have for now. And I'm just going to use an LFO to control that input instead. So basically, we're going to be changing the read Y value from 0 to 1, just as an example, to morph between the two waveforms that we were just using. And so we're going to use a amplitude of 0 0.5 and then add 0 0.5 to the output. So the output of the LFO will go from negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, and when we add another 0 0.5 to that, it'll go from 0 to 1. So this is just a really simple way to morph between two waveforms. So here the interpolation is helping us on the Y axis um, when we're giving the read Y input a value between 0 and 1, it's morphing between those two waves. Alright, I hope you guys like this tutorial. If you do, please check out our website, reactortutorials.com. Feel free to leave any suggestions uh, for future tutorials in the comments, and I'll see you guys next week.